Chris Tinker, founder of Libra Investment Services, is here to explain. Happy New Year to you, Chris. Thank you, Mark. Nice uh, the big you. investment theme of this year, what do you think it is? Well, I, I think it's already showing itself to be a variation of the, the dominance of last year, which was all about the, the Eurozone. But I think it's going to be seen to be about the currency itself now. We had a big period last year where the euro held up despite the underlying traumas that were going on in the, in the system. But the problem with Europe is the currency. It's not just the debt market. It's not just funding issues. And I think the market now realizes that the one-way bet that's out there is to be short the currency because the central bank isn't going to intervene to prevent it. It provides the potential of some form of resolution. If the euro goes down against the US dollar, against the yen, against sterling, there is some comfort perhaps for Spain, Italy, etc., yeah. from an, a, a valuation a competitiveness point of view. And um, there's nothing better than the currency markets like than effectively a guaranteed one-way bet from a directional point of view. So that's going to be a big dominant factor across all markets. How do we play that then? How do we play it from an equity perspective? I think from, from an equity perspective, we have to recognize that for an international investor, that's going to spook them if they start seeing the persistent trend downwards. But in the short term, we've already seen strong uh, figures coming out from the United States uh, in terms of the auto sector. That will be an example where I think as the numbers come through, VW and BMW in particular, showing some very strong figures coming through for last year, if the euro is declining against the US dollar, we're going to be reinforcing that sentiment, if not that reality, that the competitiveness of some of the strong manufacturing industries in Germany are going to be carrying forward. So there is an element to which the... Uh, the manufacturing exporters will be seen as beneficiaries, but also I think there's a, there's a bigger pattern emerging, which is that maybe those persistent short trades in some of the peripheral European markets will now start to be unwound as the, the, the focus shifts less to being but short the equity market and more being short the currency. Yeah, and I mean your, your, your overall thesis is this is not an investment environment, it's a trading environment. That's tricky. Yes, it That's is. Not easy. I mean, the, the point about investment is you have to see value rising across the board if you're going to see a wholesale market rise. The European Stock 600, for example, uh, the way we look at it, it, it's bottomed out, it's traded to the top of its trading range. It hit the top of that trading range on, on our estimates um, a, uh, a couple of days ago, and it's retreating from that trading range. We're trading within a rising trading range. Don't get me wrong about not being able to invest. But it's about making sure you get those trading calls right. It's not about being able to buy something for the long term. I mean, the union credit story is very important because the discount that they had to come to the market with to get the rights issue away means that's a real negative for any sector that's trying to raise capital. That bodes badly, does it, for the financial, for, for, the, for the banks going well, forward? Well, I think anybody that, need, that is in a forced capital raising position, You're raising, have to discount that raising capital at, at that kind of discount to, to, to asset value, is, uh, irrespective of the, the discount to the current share price, mm -hmm. that is a deteriorating impact on the value proposition for the banks. So we are going to have to see that cycle carry through, we get past this recapitalization issue. We don't like the financials as an investment. We know you can trade them. They got to the top of their trading range two days ago before the Unicredit deal. We were saying you've got to take some money off the table. But on the other side of the, of the coin, you've got some trading opportunities to take profits. And we constantly evaluate markets by saying these are the stocks you need to be trading into, these are the stocks you need to be trading out of. You can take profits on value runs that have done very well. But equally, when you get something like the UK house builders right now, they, they've sold off enough to be immediately interesting to us because there is a value opportunity. Mm. On the flip side, something like the steel stocks that have run on the back of that story out of the US steel market, those steel stocks are, are now looking fully valued overdone, indeed, are the chemicals as well. So we will be taking profits in those kind of areas. And that's, I think, how you're going to have to approach the market, looking for the opportunities rather than a buy and hold. And, and sure, Chris, when we look at the, the, the sovereign debt crisis in Europe, do you see a form, a type of a resolution in the medium term or not? Well, I think we, we've gone from crisis to the critical ward here. We're, we're in a situation where we know the politicians at least are trying to move in the right direction. If you want to force the issue, you're never going to find a lot of resistance on the other side because you know, it's a dilemma that they can't quite work out an end game to, but at least the politicians are trying to respond. So I don't think it's going to get any worse, but I do believe that this still is a fundamentally a currency, not a debt issue that we have to deal with. And as a consequence, 
It's going to be the focus on how they respond to currency movements and how they respond to the ongoing pressures about the periphery versus the centre. And I think the big difference that came at the end of last year was the, the three-year funding yeah, by the yeah. ECB. That has changed the game in the way that the Fed changed the game in 2008. This has changed the game to be something about how we manage within what's now um, a proactive central bank environment, how, how the tensions build there, as opposed to thinking that we had to force them over the line. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Chris Tinker, the founder of Libra Investment Services.